What's going on everybody? LK here with Unfair Attacks with something people have been requesting for so long. We're finally going to stop talking about Street Fighter and start talking about NRS games. So today I asked PND Mustard to come on and talk about NRS games. What's going on, man? How's it going? Yeah, no, thanks for having me. It's uh, I'm happy to be here. I know uh, as the theme of this video series is overpowered attacks, um, there's been one or two over the years <laughs> for uh, NetherRealm games. So uh, yeah, no, honestly, thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here and uh, I'm sure there's a lot to talk about. I've been really looking forward to this one. Like I mentioned, we kind of did a couple Street Fighter players in a row. So we've been talking a lot about FTSE, so I've been really looking forward to this. So I'm really interested to see your first pick for this one. Yeah, so uh, I, I thought best place to start is right at the beginning of, of the Netherrealm era. And that's one thing I'll say immediately. Um, when it comes to competitive Mortal Kombat, it goes way back. You know, obviously MK's been around for over 30 years by this point, And with that means, as has the competitive community. But we're talking like very North American focused, arcade era. For the sake of the examples I've chosen today, I'm gonna be focusing on the Netherrealm era of Mortal Kombat. And by that, I mean Netherrealm Studios. It was founded for Mortal Kombat 9 to release in 2011. So my picks will all be from MK9, onwards up until now. So uh, even though MK goes a long way and there's many examples over the years, I'm gonna be focusing on MK9, MKX, MK11 and Injustice 1 because it's not Mortal Kombat, but it is Netherrealm. And there's a, a very particular example that I did not want to miss out <laughs> in this kind of video that I think will fit right in. But we are gonna start with MK9. It's it's weird saying the, the word like nostalgic because mm -hmm. it's only been like, I mean, by this point, 12 years, I wanna say. It's a long time. Um, apparently so. <laughs> and that makes me feel so old because uh, this, this, this is the game that kind of created the modern Netherrealm community as we know it. Mm -hmm. Mm. Uh, obviously, you know, there, there are players who are already quite experienced at the time, like the Perfect Legend, the Tom Brady's, uh, obviously streamed on like Spooky, Arturo Sanchez, like a lot of those like players that have been around for a long time, mm. but names that are now community staples started in MK9, right? Sonic Fox, of course, mm -hmm. the real elephant in the room, began as like a young teenager playing Molina in MK9 tournaments. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how a lot of us kind of met Fox for the first time was just through competitive MK. And before you know it, it's been 10 years and now household name, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's funny how it all, but so much of it started in this game. But even though competitively speaking, MK9 was a very monumental game for the Netherrealm community, it mm -hmm. was not without its drawbacks. <laughs> and one of which was balancing in general, right? The, the real upper end of characters were so good and the bottom five were pretty much not tournament viable period there's Whoa. not many games that you can say that for mk but this is definitely one of them but those characters just don't function really competitively they just can't hold their own against the top tiers mm. one of those top tiers was kenshi so mk9 as a game anyone that followed this game competitively or even kind of just casually dabbed you know it kind of dabbled it in and out of it will all be familiar with the, the cabal the cyrax you know the sonya blade these top tiers that you would see in events constantly mm -hmm. but more importantly especially for this kind of game you hear things about them right the kind of the cabal dash cancels the gas blast the cyrax damage and the resets but one of those characters that is always in those exact same conversations but maybe not as much for spotlight is Kenshi. This character, he was the one of the DLC characters, so he wasn't vanilla base launch, so he came out a little bit after the game was out. Um, but he kind of just entered the fray of MK9 as one of the most powerful zoning characters I would argue we've ever seen in a Mortal Kombat game. Mm. Uh, for a multitude of different reasons, but I understand the point in this video is overpowered moves, right? <laughs> and Kenshi's overpowered move is Spirit Charge. This is back forward two, back forward triangle, back forward Y, whatever you want to go with. Uh, we use one, two, three, four terminology in the Netherrealm scene, same as Tekken. Um, but this move is a mid, like mid range, hits as mid as well, charging strike attack. It's extremely fast on startup, does 9% on damage, and as you can see, knocks the opponent to full screen, which is exactly where Kenshi wants you to be because that perfectly complements all of the rest of the moves in his toolkit. But this singular move was a matchup decider for him. You know, this It might not look like much when you just see it. You'll see it and go, well, that's pretty plain. But there's so many layers to it. The default version, really fast, goes super far, always knocks down to full screen. On block isn't terrible. Uh, at point blank, it could be um, kind of difficult to deal with at times. But from any sort of range, this move 
I mean, it's just, it's extremely, I hate to use the word, but it's, it's kind of spammable at a lot of ranges mm. when you use it in tandem with the enhanced version. Now in MK9, like many fighting games, you can spend a bar of your super meter to enhance your special moves and enhanced spirit charge becomes plus on block and jails as a true block string into another spirit charge by itself from a lot of different ranges. Mm. This meant that any button on block that Kenshi has, you could do into spirit charge, knock away on, on you know, for just for free full screen at, at will. But if your opponent is blocking, just throw it out and just get plus frames at will, hit multiple times, the vast majority of the time it's going to be a true block string mm -hmm. and there's not much they can really do about it this move just one neutral so catastrophically for kenshi in loads of matchups and as you can see the enhanced version also goes way further mm -hmm. like it says hi but mk9's training mode is a bit weird like that that sometimes it would come up and say hi when it wasn't really so if i set him to not block uh this is this is hitting as a mid even though it says hi mm -hmm. So when you've got as much bar as Kenshi will have, because you build meter in MK9 by your opponent blocking your attacks, by doing special moves and taking damage. And Kenshi, at the very least, is always going to be doing special moves. He's got all these range specials that give him presence for just like large chunks of damage. A lot of the screen always, a lot of them are safe. These are kind of tracking moves that he's like, at all times, he's doing something, right? Special move, right? So for example, he's got like long range overheads that do like 10% on hit, mm. tracking special moves. So he's always doing things, right? If he's got any space in neutral, he's doing he's doing attacks. So he's building up that bar. A lot of the time you're having to block them because they just go so far, which just meant that at any point, this move was just a threat. It does like 12% by itself when it connects, always gives you full screen, is super fast, really plus on block. And if I remember right, and even though this move was such a powerhouse for neutral, keep away, helping this amazing character play his game even more effectively, if you had them in the corner, it also launched. And because he's got this meatless launcher in down back one, you could always pick up with that. So even though this character had some of the strongest keep away in the game, and that's saying a lot because this game had things like Cabal and whatever else was going on. If he did launch you in the air, there was nothing stopping him from just ending combos again in the charge, always getting to as maximum full screen as possible where he was just doing his game nonstop. And if you got even remotely close to him, Spirit Charge and EX Spirit Charge was just, you had to constantly deal with it. And on block, it would always push you back so far. This move by itself, was a, a, a an absolute just death sentence for so many characters like Katana, Jade, Johnny Cage, and especially Johnny Cage, because he was a common character in tournaments. But he, mm. I've always felt that the one thing that kept him out of the top five conversation in this game was that he got absolutely slaughtered by Kenshi. And it was near enough because of this one special move. You could play Kenshi and using just Spirit Charge nullify so many of the roster by itself. Yeah, I mean, as soon as you did this move, right? Like, I just saw how fast it was, like how unreasonably fast it was, that I was like, no, no shot, that's easy to deal with. You know, I know sometimes Netherrealm games have like air dashes, but they always have like a little delay, so it's usually you have to jump. I, I just feel, I can see the space being so hard to challenge with this character. Yeah, and it was, it was the, the main thing I always felt was the, the fact that when you did manage to work in some distance on him, it was just, it was the pushback of this move mm. because you would work and fight tooth and nail to get any space and then you'd block one spirit charge. I mean, just look at that. Mm. You work your way in and that's like, I would say almost a full forward jumps worth of distance mm -hmm. that you get knocked back on block by it. And you could do it into itself. You know, if you're close enough, you could do it into itself and then push you even further back yeah. and you just any real estate you make up you lose instantly and it is like you said it's it's very moving forward in mk games can historically be quite committal mm -hmm. if you're not doing things like walking or dashing and walk speeds weren't amazing in mk9 across the board like they were they were usable but a lot of characters were doing their kind of like block dash way in right mk9 really had that kind of classic block dash approach and if you're trying to block dash your way in you're just gonna get constantly you make distance, you lose it. You make distance, you lose it. And if you try and jump and he just clips you, full screen, full again. screen again. So yeah, it was it was a nightmare to deal with, honestly. And for a lot of characters, right? It was a very aggressive game. And uh, it was just, I mean, it's a man-sized projectile. It's as tall as Kenshi is. <laughs> yeah. So like, how do you get over that unless you jump way before? But then if you jump and he does nothing, 
at the air into however much damage Kenshi is going to be throwing at you. So it was a nightmare to deal with. And I think definitely one of, <laughs> in a game with a lot of very powerful attacks, definitely one of the shining stars right up there. 100%. I'm going to be showing you something. I don't think it's, it might, it might be a little bit similar. I don't know how you feel about damage in NRS games, but I'm going to show you a move that kind of changed Arxis games forever. There's a couple of these moves that are very quiet that changed Arxis games. So I'm going to try to pull one of these up. Yeah, absolutely. I, I am a high damage enthusiast. <laughs> 100%. So um, this is one of those, we actually talked about this before recording, but this is one of those, you can't get this game. You might actually be able to get this game on Xbox 360. This is a Blaze Blue Continuum Shift 2, pretty much out the same time as MK9, by the way. This game has a really special place in my heart for a lot of reasons. There's a character named Makoto Nania, who's a squirrel girl. She punches you. In Arxis games, we have a character archetype where we call these characters just normal guys. So it sounds like what it sounds like, right? They have very standard toolkits, you know, a lot of like playing mid range, nothing too cheap, no like crazy knockdown sequences or anything like that, right? In this patch, specifically in this patch, this was the rise of the normal guy. All the top tiers are all what we thought were standard characters. And this character has one button that is probably around like half the reason that Arxis changed their combo system in all their games after this. The move also is not that overwhelming when you look at it actually, so. I find that, that that's always the most dangerous kind of mm -hmm. like over the top move though, is when at, at first glance, you don't even realize it. And then <laughs> you kind of get past that surface level and it's like, oh, mm -hmm. I see. There are two top tiers playing, by the way, but it's that move. We're gonna play. We're gonna play a little game. This move is gonna. I connect. think I already missed it. I'm so sorry. Is this? This is right. uh, Makoto's. We use uh, numbers for directions in anime games, so it's mm -hmm. crouching C. Two questions: How much damage do you think I'm gonna do? And does the other character live or not? Surprise, will kill. So it's, it's player two that's been hit, right? Yeah, player two has been hit. I'm player one. Okay, so I'm score girl. How much damage am I going to do, do you think, out of 11,000? And does player two live for, or not? I might be overthinking this, mm. but I, I'm not a believer. I, I don't think this kills. Okay. I think like like for a, a low from that range, I think you just barely live. But I definitely think you, you should live from this, right? Okay. Like you should survive. This is around 80% damage. It's her best starter and it's a low. This is guaranteed death. So that was like dead and then some. That was dead and then some. She probably had like 65-ish percent, maybe 69 percent, hey, 69 percent. Uh, Fantastic. Don't let YouTube hear that. No, no, but that, that, was, that was completely different. That's completely yeah, different. 69 percent, percent life, right? <laughs> and this move got repeated, I want to say, three or four times. So I feel like I saw it three times. Like it, it started, right? So mm -hmm. it opened. So it was the first. There's the second. Uh-huh. Then we have the dramatic freeze for emphasis. Oh, I think I paused it because I'm doing a replay. Yeah, that's there's the third one. What even is it? It just looks like a there's crouching a heavy one. punch. Yes, it's just a crouching heavy punch. Literally a crouching heavy punch that hits low. This lets her combo from corner to corner. It's her best starter. And it's one of the two moves that, in my opinion, uh, a lot of more recent Arxis games have a mechanic that if you use the same move or special move, it depends on the game, uh, more than once in a combo, you get a drastic penalty. It's called same move paration. So usually wow. your, your combo is just done. And this was one of the big, there's one from Blaze Blue, it's this move. And there's one from Persona 4 Arena. It's um, um, with special moves where they were like, we don't want people to just loop moves. Cause this patch was actually supposed to reduce the damage. Cause the patch before this, was insane with combos, corner to corner combos, way too much damage. So they lowered a lot of like damage and they changed a lot of properties on moves. And then Makoto comes and hits you in the legs four times and does like 80%. Even even with the repeat move penalty, it's it, still it, doing it's that not, much. It's not in this version. They added it oh, after this version. okay, yeah, yeah, sorry, I misunderstood. Because of this, yeah, they added it after this version because of this and uh, a couple other moves. But this is one of the big, big, big ones. A lot of people ask like why Makoto was so broken. Like everyone's like, everyone remembers from Blaze Blue, this character being top tier one single time, this patch, she was never top tier again. <laughs> and it really was, she just did way too much damage. Way, way, way too much damage. She's a really simple character, honestly. Not Nothing too tricky, really simple mix-ups. Has like an overhead that's a little fast, 
you know, but it's just she does so much damage. So, 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 so much damage. I, I, I feel like just as a utility, high damage output is such a tool that you wouldn't think is overlooked by by some people, but often it is. I feel like if you talk about what, what characters have to offer, whether it's like good keep away, effective rushdown, mix up, set play, whatever it is they're built around, mm -hmm. if they can just touch you once and win the round, or maybe twice, like, like you know, one small damage hit and then an optimal, and then boom, you're done, you KO. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like if you've got nothing else, but you've got like that damage output, that alone can keep you in it. You know, because mm -hmm. I, I just, even more modern examples, you look at like Marisa in Street Fighter VI, mm -hmm. where it's like, how does a character lose a matchup if it's like you've got full resources and you hit them once and then boom, 80%, 80 plus, whatever it is doing. So it's like, <laughs> when the whole point of the game is you have to just hit them until they've got no health left. Mm -hmm. If you just hit them once and now they've got no health left, like you can't underestimate that mm -hmm. or undervalue how, how much that can do for a character. Especially if it's this kind of example, where mm -hmm. it's like get hit by a low at like two thirds life and then GG. GG, yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Like, I always like picking stuff where because some a character had something, the devs are like, oh my God, how could we let this happen? And they have to totally restructure something. So that was a big reason why I picked this. I don't know what it's else just you like, there's just a, a designer out there. It's just like, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know that was possible. And then suddenly it is. I'm interested in seeing what you got for MKX though. MKX is... So I've actually got a move to show that it's not the most like explosive mm -hmm. move, but what this move did like to the meta of the game was like monumental. MKX was a... A volatile game like because this was a game that got a lot of patches you have to remember as well a lot of netherom games kind of had what what the community is often called like the the two-year cycle ah uh, that was kind of yes i'm familiar yeah exactly that that would be the pattern right where new game comes out after like maybe just over a year next game is announced mm -hmm. and then within the next year new game is out so it's mm -hmm. kind of like that kind of real prime time year to year and a half is usually the which it feels wild to say now looking back most netherrealm games kind of had a year and a half to two years kind of in the spotlight and then mm -hmm. the new one would come out and the other mm -hmm. one would kind of fade away mm -hmm. uh, in favor of the new game mm -hmm. so in that time with mkx it changed so much mm -hmm. like the vanilla version of mkx is not even remotely close to the version of mkx that if you were to buy it now and download it mm -hmm. you are not playing the same version that tournaments were played on for a lot of the tournaments that you'll go back and watch now, basically. Mm. Um, and a big part of that was the DLC characters, the downloadable content for mm. the game. And MKX got some real standout characters in DLC. You know, obviously it had the, the horror guest character theme. So your Jason Voorhees, your alien predator, Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, but obviously it did have a bunch of MK characters as well. And one of them was the gameplay debut of Tremor. Now, Tremor in MKX, I per personally believe could be the strongest character in the game, even in its current life now. Mm. Uh, and a big part of that is because even though the game had loads of patches, you know, a lot of the game changed over the kind of that year, year and a half window. There is one move that has been possible and is still doing the same thing it's pretty much been doing the whole time. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, a tremor move that he has in the crystalline variation. I love this game's presentation, can't lie. It's just really dark, it's isn't it? Yeah, like, it's good. It's a really kind of gritty approach. But MKX had this whole variation system, which was um, it was uh, it was new at the time. It was uh, I would say revolutionary for MK, where you had the base character and then three variations per character that would take the base moves and then either add new ones or change the existing ones into new things based on whatever the theme of the variation was about. So uh, for for Tremor, for example, his whole thing is he's this kind of like Earth elemental you know what raiden is to thunder he basically is for earth that's mm -hmm. basically the idea but he had three kind of mineral based variations i guess he's got mm -hmm. the aftershock where he's all about just like rocks and earthquakes and stuff metallic where he's about metal and kind of volcanic lava and whatever but the variation you see all the time is crystalline which is the one where he has this kind of green crystal around him and he gets a bunch of different moves in this variation but i am focusing on one move and one move alone mm -hmm. and it is called crystallization. We always used to call it the flex because 
he flexes <laughs> and he applies an armored buff to himself, okay. which I feel like I'm almost repeating myself a bit with what I said to Kenshi, but this changed so many matchups in his favor mm -hmm. where with this armor on him for a, a long like window of time, uh, he would basically, yeah, so it's, it's, it's on him for ages. But with this armor applied, he could sponge one hit from the opponent and gain a unique type of hit stun. So in, in, in MK, you've got your usual hit stun. So this string I've got Scorpion doing, it just knocks away. He can turn it into teleport and whatever and, you know, get a full combo from it. But if you get hit by it, you get smacked, you get knocked away, job done. And obviously on block, you just block it. You know, that that's we've seen that a million times before. What Crystallization allowed Tremor to do was take a hit with this armor up. And as you can see, if I get hit with this armor on, I take a tiny bit of damage, mm -hmm. but I pretty much disregard the attack and punish mm. <laughs> moves on hit on hit that normally grant combos or launches and just to showcase this even more i'm gonna set a uh, scorpion here to do this string and then block as soon as possible mm. what this armor allowed tremor to do is and if you had the matchup knowledge because this doesn't cost resources it happens really quick you, just, you do the move he applies it to himself, and boom, he's just now got it until he, he takes a hit or in, until it's a very generous window of time. It would allow him to put this on, and there are so many moves in the game that people would go for in pressure or on block. Like, they'll just go for, like, a safe string, a safe combo string. But as a Tremor player, you could know which moves you could basically let yourself get hit by because you had the armor on, and it would then make those attacks punishable despite them hitting you so for example scorpion you know this this, this is his 214 it's just you know high mid mid he turned it into teleport spear whatever mm -hmm. if you've got armor on you can basically <laughs> wow. basically block the first two hits of the string and then just take the third and then now it's party time and you are doing whatever tremor combo you want to do block block take the hit and then punish and then every hit, you know, every combo you do with Tremor, and Tremor's damage was pretty respectable too, you know. He was doing uh, decent damage on hit. You were able to do uh, any any combo. And then apply the armor again. And that's, like, not even close to optimal. Tremor was hitting, like, you know, like, just respectable damage across the board. Mm. Uh, but he was consistently able to basically have this armor on, and it was almost impossible to stop him applying it. Uh, because it doesn't cost resources, it applies really fast, and when it's on, it's on. You could have it on, take a hit, make stuff unsafe that normally is safe, and uh, use that unsafe situation to give yourself a full combo, end in a hard knockdown or something that knocks him away, apply the flex again and now you just you permanently have it on right like this mm. character was such a snowball in the sense that you are able to just always have it right you mm. find the armor find the hit and you can obviously you know when you've got the armor up this this game has a sprint so you just run in at the <laughs> speed of light but the important thing about this move was that you could just apply this armor barrel your way in take as many risks as possible and if your opponent managed to get any kind of momentum back you were able to just have the knowledge, right? It wasn't every single move in the game. It was just there were a lot of attacks, a lot of strings where you could take the hit, make the move punishable where it normally isn't. And then your opponent now, they either can't use those moves anymore mm -hmm. or they have to know it's now a massive risk they have to take all the time. Mm -hmm. And last but certainly not least, you could also enhance this move for a bar. This is the same armor, mm -hmm. only if you take a hit with this armor on, like, for example, if I make Scorpion do a down two, okay. uppercut, 14%. Okay. <laughs> complete immunity to the damage that you take when mm. sponging the hit. And Tremor didn't really need bar. He didn't really need his meter in this game to do anything too crazy, because a lot of what he got, he just had all the time. You could, if you wanted, just do a lot of EX flex. And now not only are you going in with all this kind of, like, protection and ability to disregard a lot of the opponent's moves, you would do so without even taking damage. If they were to hit you properly and get a successful hit on you, you would literally lose no life for doing it. And I know it's not the most explosive example. It's like a crazy combo or, or anything, you know, high damage. It was just this move just shut down so many characters in the game. Because if they had moves that Flex completely nullified, mm -hmm. he took such little damage that if you got the hit on him, he didn't really have to care. 
it was just, it was such a game changer. And mm -hmm. because it was something that he could do constantly, didn't cost him any resources to do it, and was so rewarding when he had this armor applied. Uh, yeah, it was it was a, a game changer in MKX. And in my opinion, a big reason as to why Crystalline is still to this day considered one of the top, top tier best variations in the entire game. Mm -hmm. And they just announced that Tremor Cameo in MK1 gives this to you as an assist move. So, wow. um, only a bit nervous about that. <laughs> but I guess as of the 20th, we'll find out how much we have to be worried about. Does meter burn moves break the armor or no? Uh, I don't believe that that different moves actually did affect it in different ways. I think it was just a simple case it just of... just tanks it. If it... Yeah, it's wow. just like, if, if it's a hit, the armor treated it the same way. It's It's been a while since I've seen this move for the ins and outs, so mm. I can't remember too much of the specifics, but as as a general thing, yeah, if he had the armor on, it didn't really matter what you hit him with. It was going to be the same reaction a lot of the time regardless, which again, as the defending player, mm. um, you had to factor it in constantly, right? And, mm. and mm -hmm. almost specifically lab, can Crystalline get out of this? Even if everything else had to deal with it, can Crystalline get out of it? And you had to factor that in whenever you were fighting Tremor. And he was a very common character as well by the end. Yeah, it's funny, like, on the one hand, I'm like, okay, so he could just put armor on himself. But if you can't handle it in the game, like, if the characters don't have tools to fight armor, armor is pretty stupid. <laughs> like, if you don't have the tools to deal with it, which it, it, I don't know how common it actually is in Mortal Kombat for... Outside like meter burn, I know like people have like armor on meter burn reversal sometimes. So it, MKX was a very armor happy game. It's mm. like frame one armor, loads of characters have it. For a lot of time in MKX, it was launching armor. A lot mm. of characters just had moves that they were, there was almost like a triangle of, of things a move could have. It could either be launching, mm. be safe or have armor on it. And most moves were one of the three. The best moves were both and I don't think I think there was maybe one or two moves that were all three at once. Wow. But um, armor was a big thing in MKX. You know, I mean, it was a very aggressive game. Um, a lot of moves. And when I say armor, I mean traditional armor as we know it, where mm. it's like you still take the full damage, but it can be broken, right? Like if, if, if a move has one hit of armor and you hit it with like a multiple hitting projectile or a normal that hits fast enough, you can break the armor and just plow through and hit them anyway, um, which is actually something that happened in MKX. And in the, the final major patch for the game, a lot of armored attacks, mm. if they were armored launchers, they lost the launch, but a lot of armor's moves had two hits of armor as opposed to one. So you couldn't just, because a lot of moves were just armor break for free by the end. Right. Um, and I would say by the end, the game is still played by an active community to these days, but I kind of mean it's real kind of main light yeah, prime it's like time a main as game. we know it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm. Um, but uh, that's one of the things that made this crystalline um, flex armor so strong was because it was unique armor. It wasn't mm. armor like every other armored move in the game had. It was a unique form of hit stun that only that move had. You know, most wow. armor was just as you know it, right? You, if, if, if you have armor active and you get hit, you take the full damage from the attack, but you absorb it and you can hit through it with whatever the armored attack is doing. But again, like I said before, you can break the armor if you hit it fast enough mm -hmm. before the move actually connects or whatever. Whereas this armor for Tremor was unique. It mm -hmm. gave him that, that, that hit stun of like, you take the hit and he recovers straight away. That was exclusive to Tremor. No other mo uh, armored move in the game was doing that. Yeah, I definitely noticed, uh, I was thinking about it too while you were talking about the move, he kept calling it spun, like you sponge the attack, and I'm like, that's an armor move. But if it's about like the hit stun specifically, that makes sense. I don't actually think I've been up against anything really like that. That's pretty uncommon, to be honest, I think. That looks really, really strong. We haven't seen it since in um, in NetherRealm games, which... Um, For the better. I'm... Uh, yeah, I, I'm happy about that. Uh, but uh, I've, I've, the weirdest thing was this this unique type of hit stun actually started in Injustice One, um, and I won't go too much into detail because this isn't move on. You know, I'm, I'm talking about. Mm. But Doomsday, Doomsday and Injustice had a buff he could apply to himself, mm. where he basically gave himself that kind of like crystal armor for a temporary amount of time, mm. and while it was active anything he got hit by had exactly near enough of that kind of hit reaction where it kind of just you know immediately just get hit and then just recover straight away where he'd mm. kind of just sponge it and just move through it so for the longest time people just called this like doomsday armor because it was pretty much the same thing that doomsday was doing in injustice one only one hit only and you would just summon it whenever you wanted whereas doomsday it was like a, a character power thing mm. it had a cooldown to it so you couldn't have it permanently whereas tremor could just 
turn it on, get that one thing for that one hit, and then, you know, he's laughing for the uh, duration that he's got it. But we haven't seen it since, because uh, we have seen armor. Armor is quite common, quite common. In, in Netherrealm games, but um, this kind of hit stun, that kind of flex armor, I guess, I wouldn't even know what to call it. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, that's definitely uh, not something we've seen overly return since. I have a exception move too, actually, I'm gonna show you. Uh, I'm actually not gonna, for the first time, by the way, I think for the first time, not Arxis game. For the first time in this series, I'm going to do something that's not an Arxis game. A privilege. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to witness I, this monumental moment. I'm even, I'm double checking my list to, I, I have like a list where I keep track of all the moves like I talked about and other people talked about. So I double, I like quadruple check that I did not use this move because this move is actually pretty <laughs> broken. Before I played uh, Blaze Blue, so Blaze Blue is like my first competitive Arc System Works game. I played a game called Melty Blood. The current game that's out is called Actress Again. Current code, kind of a long name, you know, anime, that's what we like to do, which is a patched version, a couple patches after this. This is a console version of the game. I switched mains in this game from like this kind of like demon character, so, uh, character of like two air dashes, really good mix ups, to uh, a maid. And this maid character ran. US Melty Blood for like years because one really big thing is, uh, you know, there's just command grabs in many fighting games, right? Mm -hmm. And when you whiff a command grab, usually command grabs are really scary and you can't tech them and they might lead into really good situ situations and things like that. But usually when you whiff a command grab, it's really punishable, right? It's very punishable. Mm -hmm. The character's like, oh, I missed, I missed you somehow. Right? I just love the idea of Maid being an archetype. Yeah, she's Maid and she's top tier. She's the best character in this version, <laughs> and that's her command grab. So her command grab has two two very important aspects. Why it's really, really, really busted, and basically why it makes her top tier. One is that, uh, similar to MKX actually, this game, Melty Blood Actions Again, has variants. So every character has three modes. They're, they're called moons. Everything's about night times. The game's about vampires. Cool game. Uh, you have Crescent Moon, which is like old style Melty Blood. You have Half Moon, which is supposed to be the beginner style, but it ended up being really, really stupid. And you have Full Moon, that's supposed to be more like other style, like supposed to be like Street Fighter and Guilty Gear with no uh, reverse change and things like that. Specifically in Half Moon, you could combo out of the command grab. The other versions, it was kind of situational or you can't do it, where in the Half Moon version, you could combo out of it. So I'm going to do the combo. This combo does way too much damage in this version. So I'm gonna loop it into a knockdown. Thing number two that's stupid about it is this game has combo breaker. It's called Circuit Spark. But mm -hmm. when you're being comboed off a throw, it's not that common to be able to combo, combo off throws in this game. You can't Circuit Spark. So if she grabs you, you can't do a combo breaker even if you have it available. Wow. Yes, which is very powerful. Thing number three that's really stupid is what I'm about to do. This is it's technically an unblockable, kind of a 50-50. I think in the current patch, people would call this a 50-50. In this version, it's basically an unblockable where uh, the game has a parry, like third strike. You can parry high and can parry low. And you can parry projectiles, except you see how she's kind of like looking really cute in anime and she's like tossing out this bomb. Uh -huh. and that's a bomb, if you couldn't tell. It's a bomb. So I put the bomb on and the bomb explodes and that's projectile. It's the only projectile in the game that you can't parry. Every other projectile you can parry but you can't parry that. So it's a, it's a command grab combo that you can't burst. Yes. That ends into a- Unblockable setup. Project, an unblockable setup that, that loops. again, can't be dealt with. Yeah, that it, there's some counter, there's some really high risk counterplay. There is counterplay. It's not perfect because you can't parry it. You also can't jump out of it. Cause you can get, cause the bomb will make you block in the air. And the fourth thing that's really stupid, it doesn't happen here cause my opponent gets grabbed, but the whiff animation is the same speed as a normal throw whiff. Like normal, normally in fighting games, when you whiff throw, uh, especially old fighting games, when you whiff throw, if they have a throw animation, it's kind of quick. This yeah. one is really, really, really fast. So if you jump and block the bomb, she recovers and hits you out of the air and does the same combo again anyway. So if you have good execution, you could just do this. And if a character doesn't have a reversal or they don't know how to get out, you just kill them. And that's exactly what happened this round. That's fantastic. Yeah. I love that. Yes, I love that too. This character carried me like crazy. <laughs> she really carried me. I miss my girl. This character carried me for a long time because of sequences like this. You know, what would, what would have been really funny is a move I was going to consider mm -hmm. using it as an example here actually does exactly the same thing uh, 
on paper than what you just showed me, so that would have been pretty funny. <laughs> uh, Cyrax on MK9 was doing the same thing, so he'd hit you with a combo, not necessarily starting off a grab. It did in one patch, but they took that out really early. But it basically, it was where his damage came from. It was, um, he'd hit you, launch you, throw bombs on the screen, and then the bombs were unblockable launches, and he had a, his green net move, which mm. was, uh, he would hit you with like, if, if he hit you with one net, that net would capture you and put you in a state that you can be juggled and comboed from. If you hit a second green net in the same combo, mm -hmm. there was an animation of them kind of wiggling out of the net and like breaking free. Mm -hmm. And his, his resets, his B and B combos in that game were built around doing a net, putting a bomb on the screen, doing a second net. So they got out of the net as the bomb blew up and it was like a full reset guaranteed combo. They couldn't, you know, the, the scaling and everything reset, but they couldn't mm -hmm. do anything about it. It was completely mm -hmm. guaranteed. So it looks very similar <laughs> to, what, to what we just saw there. And uh, that, could, that could have been quite quite funny. But regardless, it's super broke, and I like that. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's super, super powerful. And then, like, uniquely to this time, too, because especially if we're talking about eras of games, like, there's not a lot of command grabs in Belty Blood, especially because people were coming from a previous version. So it was really only, like, three or four. They weren't, like, super, super... One character had, like, a super strong one where he could like 50-50 you and do all this stuff, but a lot of people didn't know how to handle command grab where like Street Fighter players and Guilty Gear players were more familiar with dealing with how to deal with command grabs. So it was just like really, really overbearing. She was the best uh, the best character in the game in this version, the Half Moon version. Uh, and a huge part of it is because of this style of sequence. Yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's one of those interesting things, isn't it? In like how to deal with grabs from game to game, because every fighting game for the most part has them mm -hmm. but the answer to them is very rarely um universal right in one game you jump them others you can't some you back dash some you can't sometimes you have like invincible or armored moves and not all of them do it's uh i imagine as a grappler if like because we, we all know the kind of player that will just play grapplers in everything you know, if, if, there's, if there's a geef archetype that's what they play mm -hmm. but it must be kind of high maintenance almost because it's like you, you would think it's quite a simple strategy to enforce especially at a high level it's mm -hmm. just if i think you'll block i'll do the grab but because the way to deal with the grab is so different from game to game i wonder how hard it is to keep up with that because i'm not a grappler player mm -hmm. i never have been and never will be so that's a mindset i just don't have but that's probably just overall super stressful mm -hmm. from game to game especially if you play a lot of different fighting games that's actually kind of interesting i never really thought of it like that so like i personally don't think i have a one specific like i just pick the same type of character all the time i try to do similar things in every game but like i've played a lot of different style of characters i haven't played a grappler since i mean i call her a grappler but she's kind of broke it i, I don't consider her like <laughs> Zangief or anything you know what i mean but i haven't played a character that relied on like strike throw since then but depending on the game there are like different ways you can at least in anime games where like you could mitigate stuff and you could like use option selects against stuff to make it harder for them but then in more in more simple games like uh, not even more simple games like there are games like sf5 that purposely try to remove as many of the more classic defensive techniques as possible they really want it to be you guess <laughs> like you just guess so it, it's more traditional for sure i would yeah, say yeah yeah it's, it's kind of interesting to think about like how each game handles such a core part of fighting it's just like strike throw like how deep the rabbit hole goes depending on the game and so how some devs are like nah well i i remember um as well with uh with i say i remember like it was a lifetime ago but in mm -hmm. five obviously you had the stuff like the visual or visible i guess i should say stun meter mm -hmm. so you can see how close your opponent was to stun so if you were playing one of those grapplers like obviously we see idon with lore all the time you'd get him near the stun know they're near it stun them with a command grab and then do a billion damage mm -hmm. guaranteed combo from it right so it's uh I, I, yeah it's, it's definitely a lot to think about and i imagine from a designer perspective it's hard to manage mm -hmm. but it's funny because I, I know you said you know you don't see yourself as like a player that necessarily plays like a single archetype or gravitates towards it every time i feel like most players don't but grapplers definitely do <laughs> like the grap <laughs> like the grappler fans mm -hmm. yeah, they, they play geef or they play potemkin or they play if they play tekken they play king and they know how to giant swing and they, they lab rolling death cradle all the time, but never hit it <laughs> in real matches. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what you got cooking up next. Not gonna lie. It's filth. It's, it's filth. Uh, it is filth. And uh, a certain Wonder Chef in the NRS community will be foaming at the mouth. Actually, no, not Wonder Chef. There's, no, Wonder Chef hated Superman. 
it's Katana Prime who will not enjoy my example mm. because uh, I'm going away from Mortal Kombat and I'm going to Injustice, Injustice. Gods Among Us. Injustice. So this game I played. This game I played in tournament for like a couple months. Fun game. Yeah. My memory of this game is it's a mean game. <laughs> That's how I'll call it. It's a very mean game. That is a very polite way of putting it. <laughs> I uh, I like this game. So, yeah. I, so I've been around the NetherRealm community for years. Mm -hmm. um, I would say I am certainly a Mortal Kombat fan more than Injustice for sure because mm. MK is just my favorite fighting game period mm. um, I do enjoy Injustice but it, I wouldn't say it's one of my favorite fighting games but I do enjoy it Injustice 1 was volatile oh my god so this game very brief history lesson mm. and I won't go into too much detail but this was the Mortal Kombat team's first experience really making a non-Mortal Kombat fighting game mm. for a very 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 long time obviously Warner Brothers bought the Mortal Kombat license off Midway, formed NetherRealm Studios, and ever since then they've been a Warner Brothers developer. Warner Brothers, DC, Injustice is DC the fighting game. Now, this was a brand new approach. It wasn't built off an existing fighting game series or any form of legacy. It was a completely original IP, new story. They completely let NetherRealm have free reign over it, which meant that the roster was super interesting. Um, the story was, to this day, I think a really well done story overall. But the game was unique. It's uh, two life bars. It's not round based. It's a bit like kind of Killer Instinct. I believe Darkstalkers does the same thing. I'm they fairly do. sure. Yeah, they do. Um, yeah, so it's it's you know it's it's been done before, but it's not mm -hmm. traditional, right? It's that mm -hmm. uh, two life bar as opposed to different rounds. One thing about the characters in Injustice is that the easiest way to describe them, it's a very matchup driven game as Injustice, and it always has been. Injustice Two is the same thing, where um, characters are seemingly designed to do one thing. Mm -hmm. and that's their thing you know what i mean like that's that's the whole point it's a three button fighting game as opposed to four you know obviously mortal kombat you've got your two punches two kicks mm -hmm. but it's not like light heavy it's like front punch back punch front kick back kick stuff like that injustice is light medium heavy mm -hmm. and then the fourth button is your character's trait which is like a character power i said before doomsday had one his was that kind of armor esque thing that he had before but it basically meant that you know it was a three button fight there's a lot of a lot of differences between it mm. and i'm gonna be focusing on aquaman was <laughs> the scourge of the game for so many people because of trident rush I'm trying to think of a way of putting this without sounding like i'm just taking a massive dump all over him but it's time it's time it's time it's time it's time if there's a channel to do it by the way if there's a channel to hate on a character it's my channel go off kid Everyone hates Aquaman okay. and except Aquaman players. And in Injustice 1, it is largely because of this move. <laughs> Am I allowed to swear? Or yeah, is of that course. preferred? Of course, no. no, it's fine. This fucking move, Trident Rush, right here, hits multiple times, mm. does loads of damage. You know, damage looks all right on hit, that's fine. You EX it, and it just, or <laughs> amplify an Injustice, I'm sorry. You amplify. Mm -hmm. And you can move and guide yourself forward. Now, this move is really hard to deal with, but it doesn't look like much. I'm going to set Scorpion to blocking now. I know How what's do I, coming. I, I don't know if the people who are watching know what's coming. I know what's coming. I don't like this character either. I have set my bar to normal super meter. Okay. What that means is I have my four bars of meter. That's another thing in Justice. It was four bars, not, th not three. I have full bar, full meter. And once again, you build bar by doing chip damage, on block, having your opponent block your attacks. And it's like individual hit base, right? Like the amount of chip you do, how many times you hit, whatever it is. Trident Rush EX, or Amplify, sorry, on block. Does that much chip damage from full? I can't remember exactly how much it is. It's just loads, mm -hmm. loads and loads and loads of chip damage. And look at the bottom bar. I spent a bar to do that and half of it is back already, which means from a full bar of meter, mm -hmm. I'm now gonna go to normal. Mm -hmm. All right, one, two, three, four, dude, five, six, seven. He's dead. Yeah, he's not dead. Eight. That's one. Yep, that's, that's, one, that's one bar. Yeah. I've lost count. Another Nine. one. Another one. DJ Coward. Another one. Another one. Just right, enough. One more. One more. Now, he had full health at the start of that. Mm -hmm. I just want to point that out. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, I, by the way, I almost have another one. So like, however many hits on block, it will come back. Mm -hmm. But look at how long it takes to build the bar with like normal attacks and stuff. You know, chip mm -hmm. damage was pretty. Uh, you know, it, it was definitely prominent in this game, but there were no options as egregious on block as this was. And uh, you had a lot of meter in this game. Like, you had it all the time. Now, mm -hmm. Aquaman wasn't even a bad character. He was a very... He was a plain character, I think, right? He had, like, good damage output, really reliable buttons. He was definitely a strong character in Injustice 1. He wasn't the most extravagant or flashy. Like, this was a very volatile game, right? Mm -hmm. Like, un unblockable environment interactions. Like, even on this level, right? If we just move to the left, there's a, there's a dumpster here. The good here. old dumpster can. Yeah, that's the, 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 the good old dumpster. There's the pig on the, the, the asylum, whatever. Like, they're all unblockable. This game is full to the brim of cheap stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Characters having, like, unblockable sequences, giant damage output, overhead low, all the in-between. And here was Aquaman with his plain but really good vanilla buttons, his rather repetitive combos, and uh, every basically, if, if he blocked anything, he had very little reason to not just massively, massively just abuse this special move over and over and over again. And because you can guide yourself while you're doing it as well, you notice that like, if I just do it normally, I just push him back, right? Yeah. If I, if I tap forward, I move forward with it. But you can also go... You can also go back at the same time. So if I do the EX version, for example, I can then move back towards the end and make it way more difficult for the opponent to deal with. Mm -hmm. Now, what I just showed you isn't a block string. It's like it was plus enough to do it again. It's just if they blocked literally anything, you had very little reason to not just do it. Exactly. You know, if they blocked yeah. anything, do Trident Rush, hit them a bunch, move back to a safer distance, and just um, perpetually make it really difficult for the enemy to deal with. This game had a push block mechanic as well. So like... If you were blocking something, you could spend some of your meter to knock them away. But when you built as much bar as Aquaman did, that was a good trade for you. Because that basically meant that they had to push block every time they had anything blocked. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you just do this all the time. And that was not a situation that a lot of characters wanted because uh, bar was pretty core to a lot of characters in this game. Mm -hmm. And without it, you know, uh, some characters were truly, I don't want to say powerless, but they were a lot worse without having access to their super meter. And this move... This was the bane of... Uh, this character in general was the bane of Katana Prime's life, as he still, huh. to this day, will take every opportunity to take a dump all over Aquaman. And to be honest, I think Aquaman deserves it. So, uh, <laughs> commiserations, KP, 100%. for this character every time. So, uh, not, apparently there's two rare things in this video. So, this is the second time Aquaman made it on this series. Is yeah. it really? Yep. Say Jam talked about Aquaman, but also Aquaman, Aquaman's BS official. Uh, <laughs> one of the only characters to make a repeat appearance. If it's broken, it's broken. I don't know what to say. <laughs> like... No, this, this, this move was so obnoxious mm -hmm. <laughs> for so many people. It was, it was this or his trait. Those are the two things that I think it, were... And it was the trait. Was the, it was the trait was that it? we talked about. Yep. I'm not surprised. That yeah. was... Uh, I'm going to use the word unfair to unfair. put it diplomatically. <laughs> and the, the thing is too, like, if you're watching this and you only play anime games, like, a lot of Arxis games have a mechanic that helps you negate chip damage that costs a really small amount of meter. So you might see, like, oh, it does a lot of chip. You'd be like, oh, well, you know... We can negate that, but this game doesn't really have that. It just has the push that calls a lot of meter. Like you said, you don't build meter quickly for like attacking. You know, it just happens that Aquaman builds a ton of meter. Yeah, it's, I, I can't exactly remember how the how like one to one the meter build works mm. in Injustice because I know it's a bit different to MK. But yeah, it was. Um, I remember. I, I can't remember if it was dealing damage or taking damage that gave you quite a bit, but. Um, you had to be, it was, it was more of a, a precious resource, I guess. I don't, I don't, you had more of it because you had four chunks instead of three, but um, still, you know, you didn't want to be wasting it on the one way to not die to chip damage. There was also no protection against chip death either. Uh, if you got chipped out at the end of the life bar, that was it. GG, yeah, you know, it was nothing, uh, right? Yeah, exactly. Even, even in modern Mortal Kombat, there's like a last breath mechanic, which has like, you know, if you've got meter, you can't die to chip because it will take the meter first. Mm. Um, but that's and even that's new, you know, for, for MK because MK and Netheron games in general have been so chip damage focused for a long time and mm. they always have been. Like Mortal Kombat has had chip damage ever since the very first in 92 and it's been such a a, a huge part of the game. You know, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a resource. It's a method of winning. It's a strategy to keep in mind and, you know, it's always been there but they've always done different things to try and not make it as cheap, I guess, because obviously dying to chip is doesn't feel great and if there are moves that are like tracking or impossible to avoid then obviously chip kills become a bit more cheesy i mm -hmm. guess is the word you know it's 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 a core part of mortal kombat it always has been and the, the thing is every character does chip both players have always had access to it mm -hmm. so it's uh never felt i guess like too much because mm -hmm. it's always been a part of the game but uh even in more modern entries they do try and 
mitigate it somewhat without completely removing it as a feature. Interesting. Yeah, it's actually a... It's like a side note. I, I remember making a video before about like stuff I don't like in fighting games. And one thing I actually never... I mean, also, by the way, I do... I am not a fan of Aquaman because he has this in a big way, right? But I really don't like it when the characters win condition. We have like how they win games revolves too much around shit. Because in my head, I'm like, you're telling the character to beat somebody without hitting them. Strong, it's, it's strong strategy. Very strong strategy too. When you when you have stuff accessible like that. Yeah, for sure. And especially if it's like the preferred option, right? Where exactly. Um, and even even an MK1 quite recently has the same thing, right? Where uh, the first version of the game, the Baraka, first, right? yeah, Baraka uh, Cyrax or just Cyrax cameo in general, right? Because mm -hmm. obviously it's got the cameo assist fighter system. It's it's changed now. That they've they've already done the first major balance patch and mm -hmm. it's nerfed Cyrax in a big way. Mm -hmm. um, but he was kind of just letting a lot of characters do like string into a assist into string into assist and it was all just doing loads of chip and uh, building tons of bar and uh, it felt good to be on the you know the one doing it but <laughs> at the same time it, it meant that there was a lot of chip all over the place right. and uh, it's still there post patch just not as common you know what i mean like they really kind of slowed it down somewhat to not make that as dominant as a strategy even though it, again it's still there because it's mortal combat but it's already been adjusted i'm going to show a move that also hits you many times Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. Uh, this game is, uh, it's, let's say it's a silly game. It's a silly little game about an <laughs> RPG that I really like. And today I'm going to, of, of course, if, if you play Persona, you already know. You already know what I'm going to do by picking this character. I'm going to pick Naoto Shirogane. I'm probably going to annoy every viewer right now and say I don't really play a lot of anime in mm -hmm. general. So like, but not like anime fighting games, just like anime themed games like put the personas the you know shin megami tensei stuff mm -hmm. like that like mm -hmm. it just goes right right over my head so uh i'm sorry i'm, I'm gonna have to be like <laughs> you know use use small words for me please yeah so <laughs> so for, first off i would consider persona 4 arena to be like the sf4 or mortal Kombat of anime games this game was really 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 important to like arc system fighters arc system works games in like general and like the community and stuff this game really blew up that community it's a really really important game they only have two console games really just vanilla and ultimax so right now they're playing the most recent version which came i mean this patch that they're playing on right now is pretty old they left the game i want to say they stopped updating the game like 2016 or so uh but naoto uh one thing they did, one did one thing they did really really well is persona is an rpg and all the characters from the RPG kind of do stuff that they do in the RPG. All the characters in the fighting game, I mean, do stuff That's that cool. they do in the RPG. So Naoto is uh, where, like, the Persona 4 protag is, like, lightning-themed. And then there's a zoner that's, like, fire-themed, right? So Naoto is light and dark-themed. There are... I'm going to show you... Not the move I actually want to talk about. But first, since you, say, since you said you know nothing about Persona, I'm going to show you two moves that you would think is are worthless at first glance. Okay, that's a super. Okay. okay. It did no damage. There's another super that also, at a glance, doesn't do anything. Oh, I gotta jump into it. There you go. No damage. So this is the actual move that I want to talk about. This and actually specifically this version. So under the other character's life bar, right? Margaret's life bar. So mm -hmm. you see that little skull with the... Uh, yes, okay. the one next to the 13. Mm -hmm. Yes. So this is Naoto's unique mechanic. It's called the Fate Counter. So... She has a bunch of moves that it takes, each one takes like a few, okay? This one also takes a few. If, for some reason, somehow, Naoto earns it, and you get them to zero, you see that the skull comes on. Uh-huh. Which, now, now these supers do something, which is instantly kill you. Uh... Okay. But only when the fake counter is at zero. Since you, people usually ask this question, you can't, take them to zero and instant kill them the same combo you have to take them to zero and then oh, let them then. out of the combo <laughs> yeah you let them out of the combo and then you have to hit them one more time and then you get it fine you know and then her supers also uh can this super reduces the fake counter this one this is the ex version of the shotgun right so this basically applies that fake counter to everyone you fight as soon as you pick naoto the fake counter is there just picking her does right that. Because it, it, it's talking about her super. By the way, this character is not top tier. 
This character is not top tier, she just has a very cheesy strategy. This version, you can pick two modes of a character. So you could pick the normal version, or you can pick the shadow version. And the shadow version, the meter works differently, and you can activate a mode called Shadow Burst, where you get to use less meter to do supers whenever you want and stuff. But as you can see on the bottom left, her meter is draining. The strategy goes as such, and it's all enabled by the EX shotgun. All right, so thankfully, with the magic of editing and me having as many of my tournament sets in various games that I've played, I found this really quickly. I'm gonna get hit, and you pop the Shadow Burst, and you do Shotgun, and it takes a big chunk, and then you do Shotgun again, and it takes a big chunk, and now my, my Fate Counter is now at zero. So, now, you could run up and do a 50-50 that leads to instant death if I get hit. <laughs> oh, which which I, I survived somehow, but my, my life bar is meaningless, basically. Even though I escaped this, my life bar is meaningless. I instantly die. That's also not all that this super does on top of that. That already is pretty bad, right? You just get into a 50-50 that instantly kills you. Yeah, it's pretty cheap. That's pretty cheap, but there's actual extra stuff. How much to... extra stuff could you need? I I didn't make the game. It is over. Remember, right? We we mentioned that it's a this game is based off a JRPG, right? This game has status effects, just like a JRPG. This super also adds status effects. It adds two important bad ones. Two two really important bad ones that make the situation worse. Number one is one called mute. So this is a four button game. You have A, B, these are physical attacks that the characters do. Mm -hmm. So Naoto like slaps you, kicks you, kicks you. And then you have C and D. These are your persona attacks. So, right, so I use my persona. I summon them like Jojo. Same same like Naoto. She's using her persona here. Now, when you're silenced, you can't use the C and D button. You wow. can only use the A and B button. When you're silenced, uh, when you get hit, so I'll do like a this, this baby Margaret combo. When you burst, you actually use your persona to burst. You're, you see how the persona appears behind Naoto? If you're silenced, you also can't burst. You So you can't use the C and D button, and you can't burst. That and sounds pretty uh, problematic. It, it's not a good look. And if for some reason you have a reversal that involves using your persona for some reason, you also can't use that too. That's the one status effect that this does. Uh, but then there's another status effect that this does which is called fear. Fear is really nasty. So mute is not that bad. And honestly, in the previous patch, I think the, the mute status effect lasts longer than in this current one. Fear is very, very nasty. So what fear does is it puts you, I actually don't even need to change anything. I could just do it. It adds extra hit stun to everything, a couple frames of extra hit stun, and you can't tech throws. Oh. Yes. And remember, the goal would be to, let's say you activate Shadow Burst, you do this, and then you can do a lot of stuff. Everything basically leads to death. So if I do, if I grab, now my grab combos into death. But then also getting hit low combos into death. And then because you have extra hits done, you could do mix-ups you can't normally do. You can't tech throws at all. So you have to take way bigger risk to try to get out of stuff. It's just a really nasty situation. And this move was the great enabler in the previous patch. I think in this patch, they, they set this up a different way because it doesn't combo it into itself anymore, it looks like. But this was like a classic, like you could pick up this character legit in like around like 10 minutes because all you had to do was learn one basic combo and then learn how to do shotgun into shotgun into super and 50-50 them. And then you could just play the character. <laughs> well, not top My tier, goodness. by the way, not top tier. Perfectly, perfectly fair, by the way. <laughs> perfectly <laughs> that fair. That is wild. I feel like it all goes back to that whole conversation of like how many interactions is fair mm -hmm. <laughs> to win and lose a round. And this is like the exact example where it's like, well, how about two? And one of them is really stacked against you. No, that's cheap. I like that. Mm -hmm. Cheap is good. Cheap is fun. It kind of... So, like, she has to get to the situation, though. It is a super, right? So, you have to get, like... It kind of depends. But if you take the basic game plan, then you'd have to get 100 meter first. So, what people would normally recommend is, oh, like, try to win round one the normal way. And then round two, hit them ASAP, pop the shadow burst, shotgun, shotgun, super, and then 50-50 them try to win round two or something. So, it's not something that you'd have to deal with right away. 
you know it's something that w- but is you coming it was only a matter of time yeah, yeah, yeah eventually yeah, yeah. it's gonna happen mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so it, it was a kind of interesting dynamic I, I actually kind of like when characters have non-traditional ways to win the game because it's not that common this type of strategy is not that common you know uh in any fighting game so it's like she's playing a little mini game during like actually fighting you which i i find pretty interesting yeah but i mean also it's gonna be unique to that character right and ultimately i feel like there's nothing worse in the fighting game than when half the roster just feels like the same character agree big uh, i i really really agree with that for sure and it's it's true to like the original character and like what she does in the rpg so i think they did a really good job with it uh so i think the last one you guys mk11 right i do let me just quickly load up so this is like the longest game the longest period where there was no new NRS game, right? Yeah, the uh, the two year cycle I was talking about um, before really, hopefully for good, met its end with MK11. It was um, obviously the elephant in the room is unfortunately the pandemic happened. MK11 they they announced after about I can't remember exactly how long it was, but uh, there was basically an additional two years. Mm-hmm. This game was had a full on four years in the in the mainstream before MK1 was even revealed, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, and with that does mean that it got nice and fleshed out by the end. It um, had a major change in the sense that whereas MKX had the variation system, MK11 had custom variations, but not originally. For the first kind of year of the game, they still made... Because basically there's like a custom variation system where you have an empty variation and then a list of moves you can choose and you mm-hmm. make your variation by choosing the moves that you want. Mm-hmm. But for the first year of the game, the tournament mode had preset variations made by NetherRealm Studios. So even though the game had the custom variations, competitively, they may as well have been MKX, like pre-made ones. Mm -hmm. There was like two at launch, then they updated it to give everyone a third. They did some balance changes to them here and there to kind of alternate them and, you know, fix them, whatever. And then after about a year and a half, uh, they just straight up made a change and said, right, the custom variation system is now the standard. And uh, with that, the game transformed because Mm -hmm. there were characters that had bad variations or a variation that had one good move and one bad move. Mm -hmm. Now you can just get rid of all that. Yeah, so so this this is how it would work. You would go into your character, you would, you know, create a variation, and then you would just have a list of special moves, abilities, whatever, and you would just pick and choose the ones that you want. You have like three slots to, to fill some moves. Most would take one slot. Some of the stronger ones would take two. The idea was to create your version of the character that you wanted to play. But as competitive always goes, there is always going to end up being an optimal way of playing. And it's a question of uh, just going with, you know, whatever you think you need the most, really. As you can see here, when, when you choose a character, it then gives you your variations to choose from. In tournament mode, there would be an extra option on this screen that was custom variation and then you would click that option and it would just bring up the list of moves Ah. on the fly and you would just pick the ones you wanted and then go straight into the game so you didn't have to go through the menus or anything it was uh it was all done pretty much straight away yeah it was it was really interesting so mk11 is the final game i wanted to to showcase um because it is uh well actually not the newest Mortal Kombat at the moment, thanks to the release of MK1. But uh, it was obviously 2019 to about halfway through this year. Mm. Uh, and a game that had a really good final showing at EVO this year. Uh, obviously, MK's been around at EVO for a long time. But this year was a particularly good year for it with the storylines that went in, with the uh, the international presence that were there. There was, there was a, a lot to enjoy about the game. But anyone that watched EVO this year will have seen a lot of this character, and it's Fujin. Fujin's probably ending MK11's limelight as the best character in the game and i'll be honest i don't really see much knocking him off that spot Mm -hmm. he is just so good for many reasons and there's one move in particular that he has that i truly believe is could be the best move in the game it's called sky whacker but i call it skywalker because i think that sounds way better same uh it allows this character to do everything that makes him as good as he is without going into too much detail on the game itself it's it's shaped around a lot of specific mechanics the crushing blow system which is if you meet certain requirements in a match certain attacks will do more more damage they'll get an extra effect so just for the sake of you and your editor this game implemented the youtube demonetization problem that mk has suffered ever since this game came out and it's largely because of this mechanic the crushing blow system so i'm going to do one here just to show it off um you see this kind of zoom in x-ray effect yeah 
that can have a tendency to flag the automatic sensor detector on we'll, YouTube. We'll put a, a maid over it, it's fine. But yeah, so this game had a crushing blow mechanic system where certain attacks, if you fulfilled certain requirements for throws, for example, you know, normally you just do like a throw, does some damage, knocks them back, cool animation, whatever. But if your opponent teched the wrong direction of a throw and then you hit them with one, you would then get like way more damage. And, you know, it's a significant amount. It's like 300, near enough 30% mm. to most characters. Um, and a lot of different moves had that, right? So, like, if you hit like a high as a counter hit, that did damage. You know, if you hit a, a, an uppercut as a, as a punish on highs, it would then launch and you could do, like, you know, a cool combo from it, whatever. There was all sorts of, of, of crazy things that you could do with Fujin. And he basically just took what made the game what it was and did like a great version of all of it together and he's a very you know cool character he's animated well he sounds cool he looks cool but there was one movie he had that just shone above the rest and it was skywalker right here mm. it's just implemented by doing down up he's obviously he's the god of wind so his entire character is like built all around that so he's like stepping on wind but this move had so many options it was and i'm sure you've seen plenty in your time moves that are truly just bloated like this move had everything if we're talking the custom variations before it was a single slot so you could put this on just about anything uh like any variation of fujin you had no reason to not use this from this like just crazy mobility tool because this game was back to block dashing so if you're gonna make your way in you know you could still move in fast but uh you know it, it didn't hold a candle to this this mm -hmm. you could uh, do attacks from it so if you did one you just attack straight forward if you did um, three, he would do a dive kick, mm. which you could uh, EX for Ooh. for more. If you did a certain amount of travel distance and then hit this, another crushing blow, so even more damage, and that would also launch. And you could also cancel from it. So if your opponent's blocking, you could just, you know, go down, cancel, uh, fake them out. Because mm -hmm. on hit, this would be like a combo tool. Because mm -hmm. uh, you could, while in the air, while you know doing this, uh, if you had a different move equipped, you could do his launching tornado in the air, which really worked all together to give him just some real sick confirms. Because if you if you uh, EX the Skywalk on the way up, it would then get an attack. And he would basically send them into the air like this, mm. which was really cool for just combos and confirms. Because basically off of like all of your most important buttons, you could launch and then continue to, to do combos and get your damage. So this move, you could EX it on the way up and you would turn it into an attack. And then mm -hmm. from that attack, you would then get like your full combo route. So decent damage. You could get restands. You could then uh, once again loop this into another one, cancel it. And now you've got crushing bow throw reset territory where you're doing like loads of damage out of nowhere. You know, it's, it, it might not be like an instant kill or a hundred percent damage or anything crazy like that. Mm -hmm. But this move, completely and utterly just let Fujin do whatever he wanted. You know, mm. like it, it just opened up his creativity. And that's one of the reasons why Fujin was such a popular character by the end with certain players was he had insane movement speed. His options are great, you know, amazing buttons, whatever, his pokes, like everything about him was great. And then he just had this move to just, no one else was doing this in the game. You know, there were high mobility characters like Jackie Briggs had a full screen super jump. Sertrion had crazy keep away. Cabal had mobility with his dash and his air dash and whatever. Mm -hmm. But this move was just, it just let him do everything together. Mm -hmm. Like this move is why Fujin is as good as he is. Because it took this incredible, like very complete fundamental toolkit that he always had and just added unparalleled confirms, mobility, mix-up options, whiff punishment, repositioning. Like, it was everything he could need. And he was, like, the, in my opinion, the last character that really needed it. Um, <laughs> but obviously, it, it allowed him to be this incredible, and I think thoroughly entertaining character. I, I really enjoyed Fujin in this game. I thought it was really cool. A lot of fun to watch. Um, we saw a lot of Fujin mirrors at EVO this year because he really did kind of end the final major tournament right on top. But, uh, yeah, just it, it let him do so much, you know? And it was... Uh, no one else in the game had anything that quite let him do that much together. And it, it really helped him all together. If there's if there's anything that's been a theme with this series, because like, by the way, like the whole reason why I started even doing this was from Dragon Ball. Because people would say just like, oh shit, this jab is broken or this. I'm like, dude, there are some moves that that do everything. They do, that yep. just cover all options or like, you just can't get out of this and cover like, and, and those are the moves I find like simultaneously 
really interesting obviously good to use but really interesting too because a lot of them they're just like they're just such it's like one thing it's just one thing that puts everything together as opposed to like uh let's say like the first movie you you, you showed right like kenji's uh projectile that's like mm -hmm. uh this move is good you do good move yeah do good move right where like a move like this is like oh this puts this character's toolkit together in such a way where you can do this that and this and that he has all these options it's really hard to deal with it's just kind of interesting to look at all like the different ways things can get put together if that makes sense i certainly don't yeah. envy the designers <laughs> <laughs> i said i'm never making a fighting game by the way i'm never ever 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 don't ask me for balance help please please i just play them i know it's really hard to balance a game like because you don't know you don't know what's gonna happen once the players get their hand on the character right I mean, it's, it's, it, I can imagine there's only so much you can know, right? Especially if it's a game that sells particularly well. And even if I'm going to be generous and say that, let's say you're a AAA developer and you've got like a hundred QA testers. You know, that's, that's a lot for any student. But let's say you've got a hundred testers. Your game comes out and now either millions have got it or hundreds of thousands. Even if it doesn't sell particularly well and it's tens of thousands. That's a lot. That's a lot more than a hundred people yeah. to uh, potentially find. And it's like you said, sometimes it can just take the one move. You know, one move being a certain way and now suddenly the character is just absurd. You know, it's uh, sometimes it's a bit more obvious. Sometimes it takes a bit longer to, to work out. And um, especially if we're talking about games that have been out for a while, you know, a lot of those moves, they weren't necessarily discovered to be as good as possible straight away. You know, like MK9 Kenshi Spirit Charge, right? That, that move, Kenshi came out, people knew it straight away. That character was like instantly, this is a problem, this move is crazy, and he kind of just stayed that way. Whereas the, the Tremor example, everyone knew that Flex was good, but it wasn't really until Injustice 2 was a thing and uh, MK11 was on the way that the kind of modern N MKX player base you see playing Crystal and Tremor like that, where it's just constant Flex armoring up. Like that, 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 that is something that took a few years for people to really go, hang on a minute, how good is this move? And then now it's a, a, a huge staple for the character, right? So uh, it's very fascinating to see how long some of it takes to get discovered and uh, whether it's even known about originally, but mm. always gets found in the end. In the especially end. Especially with the FGC. With tournaments, 100%. I definitely want to cap this off. I got one more. We both talked about moves that do a ton of stuff. I am, the last move is not that. Usually I al almost always pick like moves that are like, they cover a lot of options or you can't get out or it enables like this ridiculous game plan i'm this is probably the single simplest move i'm going to share uh it might be the funniest move i have ever shared in the series mate if, if the fighting game clip is 240p <laughs> it's a banger it's like a that's banger. like guaranteed seal of quality that's been the case for a long time all right Oh, uh, yes, yes, I absolutely can. I'm looking forward to this. Yes, so this is Hokuto no Ken. I made a video about this. Coincidentally, I'm not planned. I'm literally not trolling. I did not plan this. I posted a video about this game on HNK's 40th anniversary. Uh, Arxis made this game. Definitely not their first licensed game. I think their first licensed game is actually Sailor Moon. But this was, I think, the first one they did in arcades. It's based off Fifth, Fist of the North Star. This game is very crazy. And the move I'm going to show you is very simple. I'll explain the move first, and then we'll talk about what's happening. We started with a move that was used for combos, and we end with a move that's used for combos, right? It's a DP that kills you. That's the move. That's all. That's it. That's what it does. It's a DP that Sensational. kills you. Sensational. Yes. Uh, this, do we have a mirror match going on here? Ray vs. Ray. Uh, that's kind of loud. Let me mute this. He does a guard cancel. The opponent does wake up DP, and now the game is over. So uh, <laughs> this game, yes, this game has a um, infinite protection system that doesn't work, and instead enables infinites. That's the basketball combo you're seeing here, and oh, he could do it off his reversal. So it's not that we're not gonna play Will Kill again, uh, because it's very clear that he's not gonna die. He's just gonna time out with the DP, and this game doesn't have a combo breaker. So you you just watch this, and we're gonna watch it together. Because it's just you just jab them and they just bounce over and over. This this is just one of those games that I see clips of all the time. Mm -hmm. And like and like Fist of the North Star is an anime that's been on my list to watch for decades, and I've just never gotten around to it. Great but show, this game, oh, I've heard it's fantastic. I really want to see it. I just mm -hmm. need to actually do it. But I see clips of this game all the time. I know nothing about it, but I love everything I see from it. 
Because it's always stuff exactly like this, where it's like, I almost prefer not knowing anything about the game. <laughs> because it almost like will remove the mystique if I know why they're bouncing all over the screen and just getting killed by jabs. Mm. But it's every single time I see this game, it's this. And I love it. I can't get enough. Yep. They, they figured out multiple ways to work around the game's infinite uh, protection system to cause this bouncing. Also, apparently, there's a, a rule, like a band thing that like you could soft lock. I, someone would have to clear this up for me, but one of the versions of the DP makes it so like if you don't cancel it the right way, it soft locks the game. But I have never seen it. It's, it's banned. Like you're not allowed to do it. I think it's only yeah. in arcade. So that's it. That's what the move does. You, you either literally have to restart the game. Or you get timed out. Smile. That's so. Yes. Oh, that's yes. so brilliant. That's it. It's very simple. Very, very simple. We don't. We don't. They don't really make them like this anymore. You know. I'm not even saying like. Uh, I think there might be a good reason for that. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and, and this is also pre-patch, pre-patching uh, culture, right? So like that's just the game they got, and they just they just play. Maybe the console version. Usually in old fighting games, like the console version will have some balance changes, like. When I showed you Melty Blood, that is a balanced version of the game compared to Arcade. The Arcade version before that was way more busted. Way, way, way more busted. But yeah, they just kept developing the game. This character didn't start as a top tier, but grew into a top tier just because his conversion ability is absolutely out of control. Like, he just has the ability to just do this off so much stuff. Well, I, I imagine it's awful to be uh, on the receiving end of it because it's like, like, it's like you said, this kind of game, like, because it's before the whole kind of patch culture of, of, of fighting games these days, it's like, if you still play this kind of game now, mm. you, I feel like you're not exactly going to play it, get hit by that kind of thing and be like, oh, oh that's, that's way too much. Like, you, you have to know it going in. Mm. You right? have to like, accept, accept it. You got to accept that the game. Is, mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Like, it, it is what it is. You know, any character you're likely to play has probably got something similar anyway. Mm -hmm. But imagine being on the receiving end of it, knowing that if they drop it, you can just do it back. But you have to hope they drop. And you have a long time to hope they drop. When <laughs> you're just yeah. sitting there, just yeah. painstakingly waiting for, to see if they actually have the execution. Because like, how hard are those combos? Are they combos are hard difficult? in this game. Combos are hard in this game. It is a, hard, a pretty hard combo game. There's, uh, there's like four characters that are considered top tier. One of them... Uh, as explained to me, doesn't have a BNB, or you can read it as two things. Either he doesn't have a basic combo, or you could read it as his basic combos kill you, but they're hard. They're super hard to do. They're super, right. super hard to do. Yeah, it, it, one or the other. Uh, it's a very explosive game. The game, like, kind of starts a little slow and then it's extremely explosive. There's uh, rounds where uh, this game also has an instant kill system, so there's some rounds where you literally die off the first hit in like round two or something like it's a very explosive game very 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 That's explosive brilliant. game there's also like uh they had it at they had a side game at, at evo a couple times and while people are doing infinites like people are taking selfies there's like one guy tried to bribe the other player to stop doing the combo like they they, they have fun <laughs> they have fun they understand what the game is oh that's so brilliant yeah i i, I remember hearing at some point i can't remember exactly i, I don't think it's this game but it's, mm. it's a fist of the north star fighting game where mm. one of the characters it says in the it <laughs> they have no crouching animation and it says, like, I remember, it's like it's in the instruction manual that it says this character cannot crouch because, and I quote, a king does not, does not kneel. kneel. Yeah, that's legendary. A king does not yeah. kneel. Yeah, I remember. That. But it just means they can't <laughs> block lows. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Just get smoked. Oh, I love that so much. Yeah. So simplest move probably ever in this whole series. It's just a DP that kills you. That 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 that, that sounds like it's uh, <clears throat> an overpowered move. Oh. <laughs> you could say. Oh, perfect way to top it off. Um, let the people know where to find you. Any oh socials? yeah, sure. So uh, I am at PND Mustard just about everywhere. If you want to find me on Twitter, but I am of course Mustard of Ketchup and Mustard, my brother PND Ketchup. Uh, we're just we're two brothers. We do fighting games content, mainly Mortal Kombat, Netherrealm stuff. We're just massive MK nerds at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, our YouTube channel is PND K and M, and our Twitch is PND K and M. We're full time creators across both YouTube and Twitch. We're live five days a week. YouTube videos somewhat regularly, fairly regularly, usually regularly we do our best and uh very busy at the moment as of course, of course. Mortal Kombat 1 just came out so lots to look forward to with that the pro tour is underway ufa is in france in a few weeks time mm -hmm. lots to be doing and cool. uh, a lot to tune in if you're interested in keeping up with what we do yes thank you so much 
for coming on. It's very, very much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It has been a lot of fun. It's, uh, I mean, we do a lot of Mortal Kombat, but I love fighting games, man. Yeah. I, I can just, I can chat about them forever. There's, uh, we've been around for a long time, over 10 years now. So, uh, seeing a lot of different scenes, a lot of different communities and uh, always good vibes. So I'm happy to be on. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it.